In this video, I'll show you how to create this magical dispersion effect. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for this photo in the video description. This is a simple four-step process. Step number one, we need to select the subject and remove the background. I'll grab the selection brush tool. Then using the bracket keys on my keyboard, I can make this brush bigger or smaller. And then I can just click and drag to make our selection. If you select too much, like I did with the arm here, you can hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac. Once you have that held down, you can click and drag and this will remove from your selection. Once you have your selection done, go on up to the context toolbar and click on Refine. Now we can use this brush tool. I'll make mine a little bit bigger using the bracket keys. And I'm just going to paint over the edges of her hair. So all of these fuzzy hairs are included in our selection. Then I'll press apply. To remove the background, I'm going to apply a mask. So I'll just click right here. And now the background's removed. I'll press Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac to deselect. And now we can take a closer look at our image. So you can see the selection wasn't perfect and that's okay, this is a simple fix. With our mask layer selected, go ahead and grab the paintbrush tool. And we're going to paint with 0% hardness and a little bit lower of a flow. And I'm just going to paint in black and white paint to add and remove from our selection. So first I'll switch my color to white and this will add her arm back in. So I'll just carefully paint right along the edge here so that this doesn't look so splotchy. All right, and that looks pretty good. To remove, I'm going to switch my color to black and I'll just paint over this area. We mainly want to focus on the left side of our model here to make sure that her selection looks really good. The other side will be dispersed using the dispersion effect, so it's not quite as important, but we really want to make sure the left side looks good. Okay, I think the selection looks pretty good for our purposes. So the next step is to come over to the layers right click on the background layer and then go down to where it says rasterize. This will fully remove the mask and the background. So now she's fully on her own on this layer. This is a destructive edit. So make sure you liked the mask that you applied before you do this step. All right, step number two, we're going to fix the background. To fix the background, the first thing I'd like to do is crop this image outward to give us more room. I'll select the crop tool. And then in unconstrained mode, I'm just going to click and drag this outward a little bit that way and a little bit this way. Then I'll press apply. Then we're going to give her a brand new background. The dispersion effect looks really nice when you do it on a blank background so you can see all of the little pieces. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and starting at the top corner, I'll click and drag downward to apply this as our background. Then to make this background a little more interesting, I'm going to grab the gradient tool. I'll click starting at her elbow and I'll click outward. Then I'm going to change this from linear to radial. So we have a sort of spotlight effect over here on our subject and it fades out. And now we can choose whatever colors we want. I like to choose a lighter color for the bright spot right here. So I'm just going to choose a very light orange color. 
And then for this outer color stop, I'll click on it. And I'm going to make this a nice deep brown color. Then I'll pull the handle out a little bit more to make this more subtle. But you can see that's a lot more interesting than a plain white background. Step number three, it's time to stretch out our subject. This is kind of a funny step. <laughs> so to do this one, select your subject, then press Ctrl J on a PC or Command J on a Mac to duplicate your subject. We'll come back to this top one later. I'll turn it off for now, and then I'll select the lower layer. Now we're going to go up to the top to the liquify persona. And we're going to use the default tool that we have selected. You can use the bracket keys to adjust this as well. And we're going to click and drag to stretch out our subject. So I'm mainly focusing on her black hair for this part. I'm trying not to stretch out her face too, too much, but if you get a little bit of her ear or face, that's okay. So just stretching as far as affinity will let us. I'm gonna fill in this area a little bit by going up and down like this. You can make her ear a little smaller by doing that same technique, moving up and down. Oh, but now I created a hole in her hair, so I'll close that up. So just clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging. Go up and down to close any weird holes. All right, I think that looks pretty good for our purposes. So I'm going to press apply. I just wanted to make a quick note here that if the picture that you've chosen isn't stretching very far in the liquify persona, it might be because your picture is too big and detailed. For this picture, I downsized the original. To do that, I brought it into Affinity, and then I pressed Export, and then I just changed the largest side to 3000 pixels. This was just to make it smaller so that I could stretch it more. So if you're struggling with that, go ahead and give shrinking your photo a try. Okay, we're on to the last step of this process, step number four. Now that the subject is stretched out, we can begin to add the splatter look. To start this, I'm going to turn off this layer and turn back on our top layer. I'll select it, and then I'll apply a mask to it. We're applying a mask so that we can remove a little bit of this top layer to make the edge less harsh in this effect. I'll grab the paintbrush tool, and using the paintbrush tool, I'm actually going to go to the brushes panel, and I'm going to choose a new brush category. I'm going to choose sprays and splatters, and I'm just working with default brushes that come in Affinity for this effect. Go ahead and click on ink splatter for this one, then go back to the color panel, and we're going to press D on our keyboard to bring back the default colors of black and white. Then click on black, and we can go ahead and paint on the edge of our subject to soften this edge. All right, perfect. She already looks like she's fading away. So now we're going to use this stretched out layer. I'll apply a mask to it. Then I'm going to press Control I on a PC or Command I on a Mac to invert this mask. This makes it so we have a black mask, so this layer is invisible, and if we paint in white paint, we'll be able to reveal that stretched out layer again. So using my brush, I'm just going to start painting nice and softly to reveal some of that. I think I revealed a little too much, so I'm going to paint in black to remove it. To easily switch between your colors, I suggest you press X on your keyboard and you can see that we can quickly switch between those colors. So using black, I'm just going to paint to soften this a little bit. Then I'm going to make my brush bigger using the bracket keys, and I'll switch my color back to white to paint with bigger 
paint splatters. All right, I think this looks pretty good. I want it to be a little more dense, more toward our subject, so I'll just paint that in. But that looks pretty good. To add more variety to this effect, there's one other paintbrush that I like to use, and that's Watercolor Drops. Go ahead and select that. Whoa, this is a big brush. <laughs> I'll use the bracket keys to make this smaller. Okay, and then first I'm going to paint in black to remove a little bit. And then I'll paint in white to add some of these big splotches. If you ever mess up, feel free to press Command or Control Z. I use that shortcut a lot to undo my work. All right, and you can continue this adding and removing from this mask until you get the look that you want. And that's the dispersion effect. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.